I'm Todd Allen Crane. I ask everyone I interview in this series, no matter their profession, the same three questions. Tell me your worst career-related story, tell me your best career-related story, and tell me the greatest piece of advice you have ever been given or something by which you try to live your daily life. My very first interview in this 3 by TAC series is with my friend and musical theater Broadway star, Dee Hody. Dee and I graduated from the same performance training program at Otterbein University in Westerville, Ohio. We graduated just minutes apart, really just minutes. Dee has received three Tony nominations out of the 14 Broadway musicals in which she has appeared to date. She originated roles in the musicals City of Angels, The Will Rogers Follies, The Best Little Whorehouse Goes Public, Footloose, and most recently, the Steve Martin, Evie Brokell musical, Bright Star. Dee continues to have an incredible career in the theater, and if you ever get a chance to have a sit down with her, oh, the stories that you'll hear, starting with these. The, the earliest worst story that I can remember, in college, I was told, or it was suggested to me, that I wasn't really very much of a dancer. I was really more of a singer. Okay. From that moment on, I let that really affect my ability to get out of my own way and either just take some classes in dancing, because I was a confident singer and I am a confident actor. And I'm not a terrible dancer. I've danced in shows on right. Broadway. <laughs> but it was always kind of there. It haunted me. And I let it stop me. It's not that that person said, no, you could never do that. But it made me question myself in a way that I would never have done that had that person not said that to me. And that was a professor? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that we all have power. Fast forward years later, my first Tony nomination, I signed divorce papers in the morning and then got my Tony nomination in the afternoon. That was Will Rogers. And Holy my God. my second nomination was Whorehouse. As I walked into the theater that night, the doorman said, Dee, before you go upstairs, I got something for you. And I see him reaching into the mailbox, and I recognize the lovely ecru vellum with the yeah. silver comedy treasure. And I know that's my hard Tony nomination. As, as I'm reaching for it, the company manager comes around the corner the other way and says, Dee, before you go upstairs, I got something for you. And in my hand puts the closing notice. <laughs> the show that you were reaching in your mailbox to grab your Tony, Tony nomination. Tony nomination, closing notice. At yes. the same time? Yes, mama. I swear to God. So you go to the Tony brunch, it's the next Wednesday, it used to be between sh or before the matinee, the yeah. Wednesday matinee at Sardi's, I don't know what they do now, but. And I'm, you know, you la la la, and everybody has to go to their matinee. I hung around, I think I had a glass of wine, and I walked downstairs through Schubert Alley and watched him put my show in the dumpster. Oh my God. I was like, wow, that is so great. So oh. great. And the third time, which was Footloose, my dad had died two days before. Wow. And uh, I was vacuuming. My sister and I were getting the house ready in Florida where my parents lived for the people who were coming over. And I hung up the phone and she said, are you all right? Was that good news or bad? And I said, well, I don't know. I only want to say this once. So, hey, everybody, you know, so, uh. yeah. my sister went, give me that vacuum, Cinderella. There will be no cleaning for you today. <laughs> I said, no, it's actually better for me to have a job. Oh, my so, isn't God. That, something? that is crazy. Every time. All right, switch gears. The absolute greatest thing that has ever happened to you in showbiz. Is there one? You've had a huge career well, with a lot of really good ups. I've had a lot of really great stuff. Really great stuff. Yeah, not a lot to complain about really no. live long. Well, you have the one thing that stands out. The, the, the first thing in my life that was so amazing was, was to get paid <laughs> for it. Just a simple paycheck. I would have just done it. You know, oh. I would have just done it. And they paid me. And I was like, wow, that's a score. <laughs> no. The o Ohio Theater Alliance existed yeah. when I was still in school. The OTA, and they had a big, massive cattle call right. for all the theaters in Ohio, summer theaters, blah, blah, blah. and my junior or senior year, I guess I went senior. You know, we all drove down in the car, and you had three minutes. So I went in and sang something, because there were so many summer theaters there, and did a piece. Rosemary Tischler was running Cincinnati Playhouse in the park then. You used to get your little casting slips back. Don't wear that skirt. You know, uh, you know loved your presentation. Find, find something a little more contemporary. For, you know, that, they were, for the most part, very positive. But on her piece of paper, it said, castable. Oh. And I had never seen or thought oh. about that word. And I thought, God, that makes me want to cry. Oh my God. That's good, right? And then I thought about, 
she thinks I'm castable. And I, it's like the opposite of the dance thing, where I went, you know what, I'm, I bet I work. I bet I'm going to work. I bet I'm a good type, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find a niche or whatever, you know. Right. And you did? I did. A valuable piece of advice that I was given. When I was a, an apprentice actress at the Cleveland Playhouse where I got my equity card, we did a play called Scapino. The reviews came out, and if I was mentioned, it was in passing. And D. Howdy is the gypsy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. My motto has always been from that time, if you can't say something nice, please don't say my name. <laughs> I was sort of, you know, bemoaning my fate. And yes. one of the older dowager actresses who'd been in the company for years, Edith Owen was her name. She was taking off her makeup, and she's the person who taught me, you should spend as much time taking your makeup off as you do putting it on. Wow. As you come into character, so should you leave it. It's all about going back to zero and letting yourself turn back into you, you know? Yeah. But the other thing she said when I was bemoaning my fate, she said, my darling girl, if you are going to believe the good ones, meaning reviews, then you'd better believe the bad. Let's think about that. And I was like, oh. I see what you mean. Because when you get a good review, oh my God, they're so smart. They got everything. When you get a bad review, you're like, idiots, right. stupid heads, hate them, right. never buying their paper again. Really? Uh, I don't know. Just saying. Sometimes there's an axe to grind or something, but right. it's a day. It's 300 words. Not who cares, because it can matter, on, especially keeping a show open in yeah. New York. And uh, I understand that, the value or the, or the importance of it, but a lot of times I remind myself, I got nothing to prove except to myself. So if I go to an audition and I don't get it, if I feel like I did my best in the moment, that's the gift. That's it. It goes back to that taking care of yourself thing, which served me. Served you very well. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. One of the other really valuable lessons I've learned through all of this actually came from Stacy Keach on the road with Barnum. Barnum. He used to have a party for us in every city. Oh, really? I talked to his assistant or somebody who said, you know, Dee, it just doesn't take very much for people to feel appreciated. You just need mm. to thank them. And if you can throw them a party and feed them pizza, they, it's a lovely thing. Jim Naughton and Greg Edelman used to have, right. we had pizza beer nights at, at City, City of Angels. Angels. About once a month, we go into that lobby there, that sort of funky yeah. lobby off the main drag there at the, uh, whatever it's called now, the August Wilson. Yeah. It was the Virginia when we were there. And um, pizza and beer. And they'd, they'd buy. We, it was a way to hang out. Cause once a show gets up and running, you only see people that you pass in your changes and right. your thing. Maybe before half hour, if you're lucky, if they're there. Right. Rarely after, because people, psh. and during Will Rogers, Keith Carradine and I used to do that. I said, we need to have a party. Oh. And we had pizza and beer in the, it was called the Corral, which now at the palace is full of hydraulics. Right. But it wasn't then. And it's where the dancers warmed up and the kids warmed up and yeah. the, everybody had their thing. And I said, even if you just grab a slice on your way out the door, it's a chance for people to just right. hang out for a minute. About well, once a month-ish, you know. And a Mamma Mia on the tour, I used to throw a party in every city. That's awesome. A big old dinner, like on our day off, so that right. everybody could come. Right. A couple shows ago, I started doing shot nights on Saturday night. Well done, you! If you're driving, you, but I'll provide, and then if anybody wants to contribute, you know, bring their own or whatever, they can. Yeah. I'm doing Line and Winner next, yeah. and I had an email from the, the director who said, uh, so I understand we have something to look forward to on Saturday nights from you. <laughs> <I said. laughs> oh, Miss Hody has a reputation. Well, that depends. <laughs> I just have to check who's on the wagon. And, you know, but. Yeah, exactly. Did I pass the test? You did. You passed the test. <laughs> we are done. Yay. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Castable, indeed. If you have questions or comments about 3 by TAC, or if you or someone you know has some incredible responses to the three questions that I'm asking in this series, no matter what the profession, send me an email at 3 by TAC at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.